What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of my series where I attempt to fill as many spots on the collection log as possible on my maxed Ultimate Iron Man. In the last video, I ended on 500 total gambles at Barbarian Assault and was also pretty close to finishing the Camdazal log. I only have one more left to go on that. So I'll be starting this one with 371 collections logged and it's also really late right now, so there's not too many people doing Barbarian Assault, which means it's the perfect time for me to go back to Camdazal and try to complete the log. Um, looking through this, the only item I need now is the Ancient Ledger, and I also mentioned in the previous video that it is possible here to get duplicate items. Uh, so far, I've only had one. I'm hoping I can keep on track with that and just finish this within a few hours. Well, it took around 40 minutes to get my first item, which sadly did end up being a duplicate Baronite head. About another 40 or so minutes later, there is the second Astroscope, and there is yet another duplicate item. And the second globe, so three total items I've had in about two hours so far. A 10 minutes later, there is the final piece that I need. That is the green log with only five total duplicate items. I mentioned before when I was looking through some of the top ranks for collection logs, I noticed that a lot of them ended up getting between like 10 and 20 duplicates here before they finished the log, so I did end up getting really lucky. So I'm not entirely sure what I want to do next. It's still pretty um, early in the morning since this didn't take too long to finish. So there's still not many people at Barb Assault, so I'm just going to look through the log and find something else to work on in the meantime. Okay, after looking through everything, the creature collection log seemed like one that I can get done in a few hours. I'm currently on two out of the seven items on this one, and those are both from when I had to collect red spider eggs here to finish out my herb lore from maxing. For those of you that don't know what this is, you can use certain items to create combinations of NPCs. Uh, I'll just show you guys on the screen all of these possible combinations you can make here. And when you create them at the altars, they drop different types of satchels, and those are what you guys see in the collection log. I'm going to be starting here with the easy ones. So for now, that will be the Newt Roost, and also the drop rates over all of these satchels are the same. They're all 1 in 6.6. .6. Uh, so thankfully it's not like some crazy drop rate like 150 or 1 in 100. And only uh, 4 kills later there's the rune satchel completed. The next one I'll be doing is the unicow and that requires me to get 1 cowhide and 1 unicorn horn. So this time it took uh, 9 kills to finish. That is the uh, green satchel. Well I was hoping this would happen for at least one of these. That's the black satchel acquired on the very first kill. Uh, for the frog eels I need 1 raw cave eel and a giant frog leg and I can get these from killing the giant frogs in the Lumbridge swamp caves. They're level 99, so it is kind of annoying, but they have a 50% drop rate on the giant legs. Once again, there is another satchel on the very first kill, and now I only have one left to go, and that is the gold satchel. Alright, as mentioned before, I knew this one was going to be annoying because I needed to get a raw jubbly, and this is done through creating a balloon toad, and then waiting for the jubbly bird to spawn. Uh, I guess overall it's not as annoying as I thought it would be, but I did have to go out of my way to get a decent amount of stuff for this. Dude, <laughs> this thing is pretty weird to look at. It's definitely one of the weirdest looking NPCs in the entire game. Alright, well of course the most annoying one on the entire log takes me 22 kills to get the satchel on, but with that gold satchel that is the log completely done now. It's also a pretty decent time for uh, me to try to go back to Barbarian Assault to see if there's enough people there. Okay, well I got myself a team now, so it's back to doing more Barbarian Assault. Uh, as stated at the start of the video, I am currently on 503 gambles, which is a bit over 50% of the rate for the pet, uh, which is 1 in 1,000. So there's the first 20 gambles of the video. Uh, a lot of stuff in my inventory here. This is going to end up being a pretty decent chunk of GP and Alks, and also 150 watermelon seeds. I haven't talked about this, but I also have a ton of watermelon seeds from doing this. And if you guys have noticed, I've been carrying the farmed watermelons around with me. I have like 10,000 of those or something. If I end up getting enough watermelon seeds, uh, I'm just going to drop the watermelons since um, these I can just store in my seed box. So dropping the actual watermelons and keeping these instead would give me another bag slot. Ten more gambles done there. This is the first elite clue I've gotten so far the video. I've gone like four times over the drop rate for this one. So I got a lot of torso from like the uh, 20 gambles I just did though. And elite clue number 29, 153k worth of loot, but nothing notable. So a rather interesting place here to open up another elite clue, but I got another one from about 15 more gambles. So let's see if I can get something from this. Uh, oh, I got a master. It's been quite a while since I've got one of these. 
and that is also 30 total elite clues now. So it's about time I wasn't able to do a master clue. I actually couldn't even do the first step from that one, so I had to drop it. I think I've been able to do all five of the last ones I've had, so I'm not really too upset to have to drop this. All right, so this one is insane. I got in a team with some of the best players in all of BA somehow, and I got my new personal best of 11 minutes and 58 seconds. And of course, the very next run with the same team, I PB again by another six seconds. So I don't remember if I mentioned this or not, but the last couple months, uh, Barbarian Assault has actually been broken. One of the uh, updates Jagex pushed into the game broke the poison mechanics on the healers and it ended up making the runs here between like one and two minutes slower than usual. So I believe during this broken phase, the world record is currently around like uh, 11 minutes and 20 seconds or so. So uh, that puts into perspective how insane this run was. Over 600 total gambles now up to 612. And time to open another elite clue. Oh, I just got my first piece of gilded. Oh, oh, that's huge, man. This is the first piece of gilded I've actually ever had across all of RuneScape, man. That is absolutely amazing. So the thing that sucks about this is if I store this in my house, I can't actually take it back out unless I get um, all four of these gilded items. So uh, for now, since I'm just doing a bunch of BA, I'm just going to keep it on me. It looks pretty cool. And uh, I can use it when I do Defender with my hammer. So it's not really making me lose an inventory slot or anything. So I'll just hold on to it. And I'll probably just end up storing it in my treasure chest when I'm done with BA. So this doesn't happen too often, but I have two elite caskets to open. Let's see what I can get here. First one, actually, probably one of the worst I've had. And the second one, surprisingly, kind of worse than the other one. So that's 33 total completed now. By now, all of you know, uh, dancing is a big part of BA. And uh, I love showing you guys all the dances people come up with. This specific one is definitely one of the coolest I've seen. Uh, this guy in Scepter is kind of a wizard when it comes to making all of these dances. And Elite Clue number 34, <laughs> absolutely awful. Elite number 35, uh, nothing except for the ideal amount of law runes. And here's another update on my gamble account, over 650 now. Okay, a few clips ago, you guys uh, would have heard me mention how the healing mechanics for BA were recently broken, and all of my gambles up until this point now were done on those mechanics, but... Earlier today, Jagex did push a fix with a new engine update, and it ended up restoring BA back to what it was. So these are my first runs on what BA actually should be. So you guys are going to be seeing a lot of new PBs for me. Uh, starting out with this one here, 11 minutes and 21 seconds, which I believe... Uh, before this was 11.52, so it cut 30 seconds off of it already. A same team, very next run, another 6 seconds off the PB, with it now standing at 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Realistically, I don't think I'll beat this one for a while. It's pretty fast. If I had to set a total goal for like a time, um, I'd definitely like to get at least one run under 11 minutes before I'm done here, but that's going to be a lot to ask for. And Elite Clue at 36, once again, the perfect amount of runes, but nothing too good. Here's another little update on my gamble count. I'm over 700 now, and I also did want to mention, you guys will notice my name. I decided to just change my name. I'll change it back in like a month when I'm able to. I uh, just figured I'm at BA for such a long time, I might as well just make like a meme name, so I made it Sabotage Defender, and uh, that's what I'm going to be keeping for the next month, so. Well, this is awkward. I was uh, logged out doing something, and somebody told me that there was somebody here that was like wearing the exact same thing as me. This is kind of random. This guy's <laughs> literally the exact same outfit on as me. What the heck? Uh, elite number 37, another Zami page, which I don't need uh, since I've already completed that book, and I'm also getting pretty close to 800 total gambles now. Okay, so for a while now in my comments, I've seen a lot of you asking me to show some of the methods that I've learned from doing BA for such a long time, so I'm going to go through um, and show some of the stuff from Collector and Defender. Uh, number one here from Collector, on waves one through four, basically what you do is you run up here to this first square I'm on now, and you want to block the runner if it moves west to you, and after that you run into this corner here, and this is going to block the rest of the runners from going west. This makes it so there's no chance of them wandering, and they go directly towards the trap, so it makes the early waves a little bit faster. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show is on wave seven as Collector, and basically what I do is I run over here, and I try to pull this first healer spawn, and then I move back so the second one doesn't uh, aggro on me. And then I want to try to lure this into this little corner over here. And this is going to allow the healer on their way back to restocking to tag it again and repoison it. Also, one of the coolest things with Collector, and this is the main part of the roll. So I'm going to put a red egg into the dispenser. And then I'm going to watch the main attacker. And as you can see right here, they're doing a cooking cape emote. So what you do is you sit here and you wait until the main does the emote. And during the emote, it actually stalls the raid. So... The one egg that you guys see in the dispenser actually becomes infinite, 
it basically duplicates the eggs until the emote ends. And then once the emote ends, I could put another egg in and then they'll do another emote and it'll basically duplicate the eggs again. And this helps to speed the runs up a lot. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is wave eight um, of the defender role. And the reason I'm showing wave eight is because it pretty much has everything uh, combined into one, like all the methods shown at once. It's going to go really quick. And I'm going to try my best not to make it confusing to explain. First off here, I'm going to right click my horn before the wave ends. And this is going to carry over into the next wave. This is going to make it so I can instantly call to the healer and they can overstock on whatever food they see. Uh, and then I'm going to run up here to this square, put a bad food down, and then I'm going to delay in this corner here. And I'm going to sit here and let the first two healers spawn so they aggro onto the healer. It's just going to make it a lot easier for them to use their food on it without it like running and chasing me. Then I'm going to place the normal food trail down. And I'm going to run all the way to this corner over here and delay until 24 seconds. Which is when another healer is going to spawn and that is going to make it so it doesn't run across the whole room to me. And once again aggro's on the healer. Then I'm going to come back to the trap here, repair it, put some more good food down. And this is now going to be... Um, in my opinion, the coolest thing a defender. I'm going to run around and place my food in this triangle here. And then I'm going to go back into this corner. And as you guys will see, the runners are going to move around chasing each food. And eventually, they'll end up going to the trap, stacking on their own, and just all dying. So I don't actually need to stand on the trap for them to die. And during this, you guys will also know that all the healers that are moving around will relure next to me on the corner. And then I can go to the cannon when the next healer spawns. And from there, you guys will see in the corner, the runos will just all die by themselves. And I'll have the healers lured to the cannon so we can shoot it. Once again, like I said, if you guys want to rewind that to watch it again, there's a lot to it. And I know it's probably really confusing watching for the first time, but I did want to show it to you guys anyway. Here is another gamble update. I just passed 800 total gambles. Hey, here's another defender PB for me, 11 minutes and 49 seconds. Still going good there. I do want to try to get this maybe under 11.30. I really highly doubt I'll ever get it under 11. Okay, I am up to 826 gambles and I have enough points here to do, I believe, enough to make me hit 850, so I'm going to be doing 24 more here. Well, there is exactly 850 total gambles reached, which means I did 350 in this video. And thankfully, I also did manage to do two more elite clues here. So let's go ahead and open these two and see if I can get anything. That's a pretty crazy one, a bunch of dragon items. And this is going to be elite number 39. Uh, nothing from that one as well. I think I also did like nine elites uh, in this video. Maybe a little bit more. I'm not entirely sure. Also an update on where my torsos are at since these are like the only things I'm keeping here. 105 torsal seeds now. And with the torsos I just got, I'll have 600 in just the herbs alone. So that's like 1500, I think, torsals once I farm all of these. So those are still adding up um, a lot too. Uh, cash stack, I have 3 million NMZ, so 17 million GP now as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be ending the video here. I'm still going to continue doing these gambles. Uh, I didn't decide that. Uh, I know I said I was going to stop at 500, and I'm still going. If I reach 1,000 without the pet, I'm going to take a break there. And I think I might go for the Soul Wars pet as a little break from that, and then come back here once I get the Soul Wars pet. So next video is going to be more Barbasolt. Probably some Soul Wars and some other stuff on the side. Maybe I'll go for like the Chompy Pet too or something um, since I could do that in a day. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. I'm sorry it took like three weeks to get this video out. I've just been too busy grinding BA and I wasn't really getting too many clips from it. So uh, it's been a little bit harder with that. Uh, but yeah, it's like 450 hours total. I think I've spent doing BA so far. So it's a lot of time going into this. But yeah, thank you guys per usual. And I'll see you in another week or two with another video.